Yo, what's going on guys? JBH here and welcome back to iRacing where this week we are at the Barber Motorsports Park in Birmingham, Alabama for what will be sort of like an iRacing recreation of this week Ken's Grand Prix of Alabama in the real life Verizon IndyCar series. But before we get to the IndyCar series, we're going to start with some support category action in, the, well, and the first race <laughs> will be the Pro Mazda category. So, We've just joined an official race. We are the one car out of 17 in total here in this split. It's the only split, so this is basically top split, I guess you could say, because there are no other splits. Duh. Pace-wise, I'm not too sure. I haven't done too much practice. I basically just built a quick setup based on what I thought was something half-decent. <laughs> I mean, for those that don't know, I actually used to race this category in real life, so I do have a little bit of knowledge when it comes to this car and this track, actually, funny enough. I used to live about two minutes down the road from this track in real life, so, uh, well, when I was competing in the US, I did, so it was pretty much there every weekend, well, not every weekend, but there every now and then, so I do know the track, like the back of my hand, and hopefully we can put it to good use here on iRacing. So just awaiting the qualifying session to go live, and then we'll see how far up the field we can get this Pro Mazda. Now this is last year's car, so it is the older version of the Pro Mazda. In 2018 they came out with a brand new car, which unfortunately we don't have yet on our racing. Hopefully we do get it one day. But yeah, no, this this old car is a lot of fun. It's definitely one of the hardest open wheel car um, open wheel cars to drive. When it comes to those sort of junior formulas, there's it's got a lock differential and it's got a very uh, short wheelbase, so it does like to oversteer quite a lot. Wait, open? I can't remember if it's got a. I say lock differential. I meant open diff. I can't remember. It's been two years, so <laughs> I'm trying to. Remember. I've driven so many different cars since then. I keep forgetting which one's which, but anyway, point is it does like to o oversteer quite a lot. And you need to be oversteering and sliding about for this thing to be quick, so... Anyway, we'll see how quick we can set, or how quick a lap time we can set. I do love this track, it's pretty much just a roller coaster. <laughs> So many up and down, so many high G forces. Oh, Jesus. Alright, here we go, first lap. So much slower than the IndyCar. I've okay, just done a huge practice lap. session in the IndyCar and it's so different to this. You can make or break a lap through that sort of chicane section, it's really hard to get right, but once you do get in a rhythm and you hit the same spot over and over again, it does feel really good, I must admit. Hard on the limiter. Fix too early. Oh, missed that one completely. God, that was a cock up. Alright, we'll get one more lap there. Oh, God, come on. Oh, shit! Wow. That, <laughs> when I was talking about oversteer, that's what I meant. <laughs> this. Fuck, damn, I really could have nailed that lap. You can see. Ah! <sighs> It's cold conditions as well. I should be in the high 15s. That was really embarrassing. Anyway, we'll just have to hope that <laughs> first lap holds up something. Uh, paint scheme for this week. I do want to give a shout out to my good friend David Vieira. 
He is the crew chief slash spotter for me on the NASCAR side of things. And, well, as you can see here, I've gone full nerd. I'm a massive Trekkie, so sporting the Star Trek <laughs> livery. Do love my Star Trek. It is so much, well, so much better than Star Wars. And watch the dislikes flow in. But yeah, no. Running the Star Trek livery for <laughs> this week. I'm just waiting for some of these guys to go quicker. I, I, I can feel it. Uh, which one do I want? Wait, what am I? I can't even remember which one I'm on. Nope. Nope. Alright. Just waiting. I don't feel like we're going to stay on the pole. These guys probably go quicker on their second lap. I know I definitely could have gone much quicker on that second lap, but hopefully we just we just can't spin in the race. Like I can't believe I just screwed up like that in qualifying. I can't afford to do that in the race. Just going to have to keep it nice and steady. It's pretty close though. Four tenths between first and sixth. That's really nothing, but again, definitely should have gone much, much quicker than that. That was embarrassing to say the least, but we got three minutes here. I don't think that'll hold up as the pole time, but we'll just see how much longer it lasts. But in the meantime, we'll just sit here and wait. Now this car, if you're wondering compared to real life, uh, this car is, it's definitely the most realistic pro, I think it's the only pro master you can get out there on the sim, but it does have its sort of realistic points and then non-realistic points. It uh, definitely, it definitely for the most part feels like a pro Mazda, but it does have some sort of issues with it. It's slightly over gripped. It's slightly overpowered. I felt um, you can't adjust the front roll bar in iRacing, whereas you can do that in real life, which is a huge sort of help, especially when these cars can change so much throughout the race. You definitely want to have the ability to change that front roll bar and, you know, make the front of the car understeer and oversteer however you want it, especially if it's like a cold session and you're loose for the first couple of laps. And then once the rear tire heats up, you can start to move that bar further back. Uh, oh, sorry, further forward, I should say. Um, oh, to be honest, I can't even wait. I can't even remember which way it was. It's been it's been two years since I raced uh last race in the actually no less than that a year a year and a bit since I last raced the Pro Mazda. So, and since then I've done so many different cars on iRacing that I've totally forgotten for the most part. But I never forget how it drives, and that was just incredibly loose. This this car was so hard to drive on the edge compared to the other open wheel cars it really makes it makes the formula 3 and the formula 4 and and formula renault and all those cars look like a piece of piss but this thing is incredibly loose and hard to drive in real life it still is on here in fact it's probably got a little bit too much grip another thing that they have on here that's probably they that they don't have in real life is or they have in real life that they don't have on i racing i should say is that they use the Goodyear tyre, which they used to use in Pro Mazda up until I think 2012 or 2013, and then they switched to the Cooper tyre, which the Cooper tyre is a piece of shit, <laughs> just putting it out there, we all hated it, uh, the Goodyear tyre is way grippier and, and lasts way longer, so I suppose they kept it on iRacing for that reason, instead of switching over to the Cooper tyre, either that or they just didn't even know, <laughs> but yeah, the Cooper tyre requires a lot more sort of finesse and a lot more grooming and less lead foot and less uh, heavy inputs into the steering wheel I should say. You've got to be a lot smoother but we, mi we missed the ma apex by about half a mile on that last corner so definitely could have gone much quicker but we are somehow still in the lead. We're at, albeit by six thousandths of a second but we are still in the lead. I don't quite know how that works but that's all right I suppose. Wow. There is a second between first and tenth, less than that, nine tenths, and there is four tenths between first and eighth, so it's pretty close. I do feel like hopefully we should be a little bit quicker in the race. However, the draft, oh, and that's another thing that I'll probably say is that the draft in real life, you you really do experience quite a lot of aero wash in these cars in real life, but here on iRacing, it doesn't seem to be all that much affected. So, yeah, anyway, we'll just wait for a couple more minutes. Uh, sorry, a minute or so, and then we'll get underway. 
Uh, yeah, oh, I totally forgot about that as well. For yeah, some reason on my racing, we do standing starts in this Does series. Does anybody know how is, much fuel we need? If you did standing starts in. Shit, I should probably change that as well. Fuck, 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 fuck. I think 15 liters will get you there. I just switched to 4.8, I don't know. Get on the grid. Is that max? I have gallons. See the 4 or 4.8. One quick down from max. Wow. Thank you. Alright, yeah, so in real life, if you tried to do a standing start in this car, the, well, the entire clutch would just explode, so that's probably something they could fix. Mind you, I don't mind doing standing starts in this car. If you get them right, that is. We'll see if we can get another one of our spectacular standing starts like I used to. Alrighty, here we go. First lap, or first race for the weekend in the Pro Mazda. Feels like the first lap, especially coming from the IndyCar. If we can hold on, I think we I might be alright. But, uh, yeah, it's just yeah, whether we can finish. I don't know how we're gonna go keeping this car on the track for the full duration of the 20 laps. Right, 20 laps? It's quite a hike around here. It's like 25 minutes. God, I was hoping it was more like 10 or 15. I think the real life races are like 30, 40 minutes anyway, so that's probably about right. Well, it was when I raced anyway. Alrighty, here we go. Back in the Pro Mazda. I haven't raced in the Pro Mazda since like two years ago. I haven't raced in real life since a year ago. Here we go. Green, green, green. 20 more laps. Oh, nailed that one. Oh, Jesus. She is loosey goosey. You'll notice me keeping a cracker throttle um, going into some of these corners, and that's just to keep the diff spooling up so you don't sort of lock up and spin. Take it nice and easy this first lap until I feel the car out properly. Oh my god, so ridiculously difficult. If we can hit the apex there once in this race, that'd be nice. Ow. Oh, this is so loose. Guy in seconds catching up, but I am taking it very easy right now. Just waiting for these good years to heat up a little bit. Fucking hell. I'm gonna die there in a sec, I can feel it. Nice 
probably should have taken some of this front wing out. God damn it. Problem is, if you take the front wing out, then you have no front end everywhere else on the racetrack. This thing is so unstable. Sixteen five, so we've already gone quicker than qualifying. That's better. Get it on the brakes. The more you brake in this car, the looser it is. So if you can stay on the throttle, the more you should force the front end to understeer. Much a bad thing. Flirting with the grass there. So I'm trying to build my confidence up and get in a rhythm. I'm literally driving at 50% trying to hold onto this thing. It's starting to pull away from the guy behind. Not breaking that early, we went. Come on, Jason, focus. I really shouldn't be shifting that early into fifth as well. I risk blowing the engine. But I am right on the edge of spinning out every time through there. That's better. That's actually quicker as well. 
don't really know why I was shif shifting the fifth so early. Literally have to get right out of the throttle every time I go over that rise. It's either that or take front wing out, but I don't really want to take the front wing out because I don't want to lose that front end grip everywhere else. That was a horrible lap. Just playing with him right now. I don't. Every time he gets closer, I just tend to push a little bit harder. And every time he sort of drops off a bit, I sort of take it easy. Got ten laps to go. Ah, shit. That curb is nasty.
mistake. Alright, so if we can get a little bit further ahead, we should be able to break the draft. So I might push for a couple laps now. Just give us a little bit of breathing space from any dive bombs in the last few laps. Alright, seven laps to go, or six and a half. Oh shit. 
That, that was scary. Don't do that again, Joseph. You've got five left to go. And even with that, it was still almost our fastest lap of the race. Asking a lot of those fronts going into there. They sort of lock up, then continue rotating, then lock up again like five times. Catch this lap car here. Thank you, sir. Right side. Clear on the right. That was a pretty good lap. God, I really want a 15 before this one's out. Go. Man, this thing is just on rails. Provided I can keep the rear underneath it in some of these corners, it's definitely a good setup. That car's a lap down. Some of that old knowledge came in handy.
Alrighty, last lap, here we go. One more lap to win. This guy's going to be super slow through here, I can tell. She wasn't too bad. The car on your left. Clear. Died on the last lap. Alrighty, one race, one win. I like it. Hee <laughs> Trekking it up. Alright. Well, you once we. Good job, Rodrigo. This is what happens when you have the best crew chief. Once we got through the first couple of laps unscathed nice with the loose system. setup, then we managed to just, well, hold it on the track. Yeah, thanks, mate. And, well, we survived, to say the least. Alright, guys, we're going to do one more race here in the Pro Master this weekend. I'll probably look for a little bit of a stronger strength of field. See when the uh, strength of field race is here. I'll go and have a look to see when they actually are on. But stay tuned. We're about to go run the IndyCar race, actually. So hopefully we can get a decent result in that. And then we'll post the final Pro Master race after the IndyCar race that'll probably be tomorrow. So thanks guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a little bit lonely at the front, but we managed to hold it together and come away with the win. Alright guys, until next time, I'll catch you later.